Hey everyone, it's Daniel from InfraVest here. Just want to talk about real quick with you about Jerome Powell. A couple of comments that he said today uh, as he was testifying um, in front of Congress and talking about kind of monetary policy and how it's going to affect the markets, how it's going to affect the economy. For those who don't know, Jerome Powell is the chair of the central bank who runs and manages the money supply and the interest rates within the United States. So it's very important that we follow you know, what Jerome Powell um, says, what he has to say in terms of uh, the economy, interest rates, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, which could play out in terms of the markets, the U.S. markets, and could have also influence globally as well, as other central banks tend to mimic similar um, ways and practices that the U.S. central bank uh, conducts. So, um, let's start off with a first comment here, where Br Jerome Powell came out and said, "It is a possibility that our rate rises." that our rate rises could cause a recession. So that's pretty interesting because just about a year ago, right, Jerome Powell came out saying that um, we were probably going to see uh, rate hikes coming in in the year of 2022. And it is very likely that, um, you know, throughout in 2022 that we're going to see a soft landing, a soft landing, a soft landing. And then a month or two ago, you came out, Jerome Powell started talking about, hey, you know, um, in, we are probably going to see a softish landing in the coming months, right? So just from that alone, those words alone, from a soft landing to a softish landing, it's already telling you that the interest rates that are expected to come into the markets are going to have somewhat of a toll on the economy. And with the with the basically um, press conference that came out, um, uh, with the FOMC meeting that came out just uh, a week uh, ago, we had Fed come out with its with its dot plots and with its projections, basically downgrading growth, and also Fed talking about today about growth destruction, about growth getting worse off, right? So this is all kind of recessionary signal. And it's so funny to see at the start of the year, we're talking about soft landing. Then we're changing the words and saying soft-ish landing, right? To now talking about uh, it's possible that, you know, rate hikes could cause a recession. So you can see the Fed is slowly, slowly bringing you towards the attention that, hey, wake up, everybody. Uh, we're probably going to see quite slow growth in the economy and probably going to see a recession if we continue to raise rates uh, aggressively, right? Obviously, he's not going to come out and, and say it bluntly like that. He's not going to, they're not going to forecast a recession and tell you that, hey, a recession is going to come. It's just, they're just going to say, oh, the probabilities are such and blah, 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 right? But the fact that we've moved from a soft landing to a softish landing to now recession Right, talking about recession, it, it goes so it goes to show basically the Fed is trying to price in that you know a downfall is gonna come. A downfall is gonna come. So expect that uh, to come in the uh, coming months. You know, we've been talking about this on the channel for quite some time about recession looming, recession coming in, about rate hikes affecting the markets and rate hikes especially affecting the housing market is another one. You know, I'm going to try to edit a clip here somehow if I can um, on a uh, clip of what Powell said during uh, a, the FOMC meeting about housing prices. A young person looking to buy a home, you need a bit of a reset. We, we need to get back to a place where, where supply and demand are, are back uh, together and where inflation is down low again and mortgages or mortgage rates are low again. So this this will be a process whereby we ideally we 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 do our work in a way that where the housing market settles in a new place and housing availability and, and credit availability are at appropriate level. Now, let me talk about a few things here, a few comments that Powell made that relates to the housing market as well. So here he said that we may well need to sell some MBS at some future date. MBS is mortgage-backed securities. So when you start to sell mortgage-backed securities, you're basically bringing yields on mortgage bonds higher 
which is basically going to bring mortgage rates higher as well. And again, um, I'll put somehow the, the clip in there so I can show you that Powell wants to move towards bringing housing prices lower and kind of more stable. And by doing that, now he, he, he said that at some point in the future, we have to uh, probably talk about selling mortgage bonds. Now, right now with the balance sheet and what they're doing, they're kind of, they're not selling anything right now. They're just letting the bonds mature, including the mortgage backed securities, meaning that whatever matures, they're not going to reinvest, right? Um, however, the topic has come up a couple of times with other Fed members about selling these mortgage backed securities. Now, once you start selling mortgage backed security, that creates more tightening in the markets. It creates higher yields. It creates mortgage rates to move up higher as well, which puts a lot of stress on the housing market as well. So definitely we've also heard from Bank of Canada talking about that people who purchased homes in the past year or so um, might see stress. A lot of uh, Canadians might see stress in terms of the housing payment um, as uh, prices may correct itself. And um, also we heard from Bank of Canada come out and talk about that they don't have a housing target they have an inflation target, a, a monetary policy regime, right? Which means that they're trying to bring inflation down. That's what central banks are there to do, to bring inflation back to their target range, which tends to be around 2% in many countries, right? So same thing, right? With Bank of Canada, they want to bring it down. If that means, you know, pinching and hurting people a little bit to bring that down, it might, you know, they may do it. So going back again, spinning back to the U.S., spinning back to what Powell said, selling mortgage-backed securities does put downward pressure on housing prices, and you should expect that probably housing prices should come off. And I'm starting to be convinced now that we might see quite the sell-off in the housing market, especially as Powell keeps coming out and talking about he wants kind of normal prices, normal normalized prices, so that first-time home buyers can go out and purchase pr purchase homes uh, and and it's not at a crazy situation here so pretty interesting to see that another thing i want to comment a lot of people talked about that if you're selling these mortgage-backed securities a lot of them might end up in a loss and and then that was the argument where a lot of people said that okay if you're selling this off your balance sheet then most likely um you know the um you're, you're not going to sell the mortgage-backed security but that's wrong Powell came out and said, unrealized losses on our balance sheet has no effect at all on our decisions on policy. We said we will look at selling mortgage-backed securities when balance sheet reduction is well underway. But this unrealized losses, you know, has no effect. So that means they will eat the losses in order to tame inflation and sell those mortgage-backed securities. So that basically wipes out the kind of uh, speculation that they're not going to sell bonds, so def especially the mortgage-backed securities. So this kind of uh, proves to you that, you know, they might go ahead with this uh, mortgage-backed uh, security sell-off. So, so keep an eye on that. That could come, come in the coming months, and definitely that's going to spur uh, housing prices to uh, depreciate quite, quite a bit. Um, here, another comment on housing. We want to get housing market back on a more sustainable path. I think you will see increase in housing prices to slow pretty significantly now. Again, basically Powell coming out saying that, here's another comment also, rate cuts should have an impact on housing, on house prices fairly quickly and we're seeing a slowdown in housing. Again, Powell's coming out attacking the housing market, saying that prices need to come down, prices need to come down, and they will do what they need to do. Here, another another comment. Our goal is for soft landing, going to be very challenging. It has been made more challenging in the last few months. Uh, when asked about rate hikes of 100 basis points, I will never take anything off the table. So right there, two messages there telling you that soft landing to softish landing to now it's becoming very challenging of a soft landing and kind of hinting to you, preparing for you and telling you that, hey, 
you know, soft landing is looking less likely. And there's external factors that I can't control. And there's factors from the interest rates that um, might might just break the economy. Right. And on top of that, an additional hawkish comment saying that a possibility of a 100 basis point rate hike, what would take us, what would take the U.S. to do a 100 basis point rate hike? It's if inflation doesn't solve on its own. And also keep in mind the uh, University of Michigan numbers, the expectations of consumers about inflation, if that continues to be elevated, if headline inflation continues to be elevated, that might also signal towards higher and more stronger rate cuts, uh, sorry, rate hikes, right? So watch out for the 100 basis point rate hike. That's also a possibility. The fact that he put that also on the table and any possibility of happening or, or, or higher rate cut, rate hikes, sorry, to come in, uh, that's definitely um, something you, you want to monitor, especially if, when the data comes out, especially if inflation is not lowering. If we're, if, you know, right now the markets are pricing in 75 basis point rate hike as a possibility between 50 to 75 possibility next month for the U.S. Same thing for Canada. 75 basis point rate hike also in Canada as well, which is definitely going to affect the markets. The U.S. has already done a 75 basis point rate hike this month. They might do a next one next month as well. Can they do a 100 basis point rate hike? We'll find out next month when we get more data and when we get more information. All of this is just telling me and alarming me that a recession is around the corner. A recession is all around the corner. We can probably see equity prices continue to plunge uh, more. And then possibly we'll see what how inflation plays out. Now, what if it doesn't come around the corner, right? What if we don't see it? What would that look like? That would look like it, if we start seeing data in terms of inflation expectations coming down lower. That would look like if we see supply constraints starting to solve on its own as well. And China starting to open and less of the tensions and the wars between Russia and Ukraine. If we get a miracle uh, for all of these things, food prices are coming down, gasoline prices are coming down, which we're seeing crude oil come, come off quite a bit from 122 per uh, $122 per barrel to now $105 per barrel. We're seeing it come, come off quite a bit. But if that continues to happen, then sure, right? Maybe we may not have a bad correction or a crash or a recession. But hard to tell. We need to, uh, we need to see uh, more when it comes to data. And it's looking like the probabilities are that we're heading, we are probably already in a recession and we could see more downside in terms of equities. And that's why you're seeing stocks are having still a tough time moving up higher just because of this recession trade, right? Bad news equals recession, which equals bad for equities. So anyways, leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And I hope to see you guys around um, in the next video. Thanks and talk to you guys later. Bye.